bam, snap captions, 1.6 is out. Automatic captions, no keyframing, no manual cutting clips, everything you see done completely for free. Just hit generate and what is a bin? Why bins? This is so complicated. Bins are stupid. Why do I need to use bins? Ah! All right, I finally. Hey professionals, I've heard you loud and clear. When we were first developing Snap Captions, it was created with experienced full-time professionals in mind. It was basically the tool that I was dreaming of having for myself. It never occurred to me that it would ever receive so much support and from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Our new goal with all Snap plugins moving forward is to be beginner friendly, professional ready. We'll show you what that means later in the video. This entire update comes thanks to my awesome friend Asher Rowland and you should definitely check out his channel. In this video we're going to be doing a full workflow tutorial from installing, setting up projects, best practices. Even if you're familiar with Snap Captions, really make sure you keep watching this because a lot of things have changed. Also, stick around for a surprise ending, something big is coming. So without wasting any more of your precious time, let's get into it. First step as always is download the files in the description. And just like the last version, you need to extract the folder after downloading. Now, if you're new to Resolve, I recommend you use the example timeline so that you can practice along. You can find it by going into the Snap Captions folder, clicking into the project example and double clicking the practice project. Then in DaVinci Resolve, you want to click on Workspace and move down to the console. Then it's as easy as dragging the Snap Captions Lua file inside the console window and bam, a brand new looking window greets you. There's a special little Easter egg hidden somewhere in the plugin. And so the first person to find it, take a screenshot and comment in my Discord with the word Snappy gets a free copy of SnapPod. We'll leave a few hints in the video for where it might be. First step after you've dragged Snap Captions into the console is you wanna click the little install button at the top right here. So once we've done this, you can actually close Snap Captions and then reopen it by going workspace comp Snap Captions. So you'll notice another window pops up, your library, which stores text packs. Yes, you heard that right. What we've created here is a way to store your text packs so that we can easily transfer them between projects. Snap Captions now comes pre-installed with the clean pack so we can say goodbye to those dog shit looking captions I created when I first released it. So we're gonna tick the clean pack here and then hit use selected pack. Did you notice that? The Snap Captions folder will install automatically without you needing to do anything else. So no more comments about Orson, where do I get the bin file? Before we generate our fancy captions, we first need to create a subtitle track. If you have DaVinci Studio, click Timelines, Create Subtitles from Audio. Now there's really two settings here that you want to take notice of. So we have the characters per line and how many lines you want to have. Generally speaking, my personal preference is to go for 18. Now I really want to take a moment to pause here and really just explain how powerful DaVinci Resolve subtitle feature is because a lot of people don't realize how much you can do with it and I'm committed to improving your workflow and saving time. If you want to animate one word at a time, it's as easy as setting the characters per line to one. Resolve will round that lonely one character up to a whole word, which means you can generate captions like this. Now, if you have really noisy audio and your subtitles aren't coming out in terms of accurate words or timing, for instance, when you're riding on a lawnmower, see, or you can actually turn on voice isolation first, then generate your subtitles and they'll come out a lot better. Or for instance, when you're riding on a lawnmower, see, before, you know. And if you only want to caption a small section, you can use in and out points. And if you have multiple speakers, you can create separate subtitle tracks for each person, which means that you'll be able to generate different style captions for each speaker with just a few clicks. This is what I mean when we say beginner friendly, professional ready. We want our tools to be intuitive enough that just a beginner can use it after one tutorial, but our plugins are also designed to work seamlessly with Resolve's native tools. So full-time professionals can adapt the plugin to their own workflow and never the other way around. Anyway, rant aside, back on track. Now, before we generate our fancy looking captions, this is a really good spot to pause and refine what we like to call the phrasing. Doing this now rather than later lets us iterate and be more creative faster when we get into the cooler stuff. I like to do a quick run through of the subtitle track to check that the words are grouped in an engaging way and make sure the spelling is correct. 
So with this out of the way, we can finally use Snap Captions. We can hit this little refresh button and you'll see it populates there. We want to make sure we've chosen the right subtitle track to the one we've just generated. This is what Snap Captions is going to use to determine what words are placed when. Then after that, we then want to choose our style of templates. So for here, I'm going to be choosing the Snap Bold version 02. And with that out of the way, we can now go across and hit Create Captions. And then once it's finished, we can watch through these and see if we actually like these captions. Did you know that we can finally in DaVinci Resolve create automatic fancy captions like you see? For the experienced users and power users out there, you will notice that Snap Captions now stays open and you can change this by going to the Settings tab and selecting this box here. So after having a look at these, you might be thinking, hmm, these captions are a bit plain looking. And so I'm gonna show you how we can quickly make these look a bit more polished. As a quick little tip, a lot of people have this idea of using the settings tab to change the scaling or the position. Don't do that. When it comes to every setting we want to change, we want to stay within this title tab over here as this is what Snap Captions is able to read and duplicate. And so for this caption right here, let's just say that this white, it's a bit boring and we want it to be just a little bit more polished. So to do this, we need to start by selecting any of the text plus clips on our timeline. We're going to go to the shading tab here, which is where we can basically control and change all of the colors within our caption. I'm going to choose element one, which is this white here, and I'm going to go from a solid to a gradient. And then with this selected, I'm going to choose a base color. So in this case, I'm going to choose our lovely yellow. And then I'm going to do this again over here and create another yellow. What I'm doing here is creating three points in the gradient and I'm just going to pull these in like so. So now when we have a look at the caption itself, you'll see that it's got this metallic shine to it. Just as a little note, if you don't like the 3D depth we got going on here, you'll see we've actually built some custom controls that come with our clean pack. And you can simply go into these styles here and turn the depth effect off and you'll get something that's a bit more flat and traditional. I really like it, so I'm gonna keep it on. And if you wanna get even more effects like this, you should definitely check out our creator pack, which comes with a bunch of awesome looking captions ready to go. So with that out of the way, before we start generating with this new style again, there's probably another issue that you may have noticed, and that would be the position of them. So if we have a look here, you can see that the captions are covering my mouth. Now, a common mistake here is most people try highlighting all the captions at once and changing the position, and this, well, it doesn't work. And worst of all, if you try to generate with that caption again, it's not going to carry across that positioning change. Here's how you do it with Snap Captions. We're going to go to the Layout tab and use the center controls to reposition one caption in our desired spot. Now we just drag it into the Snap Captions bin, rename it something easy to reference, then in Snap Captions, hit Refresh and generate with our newly created template and boom. Let's give it a quick look. Did you know that we can finally in DaVinci Resolve create automatic fancy captions like you see below? Yeah, and so we're almost happy with these, but if we have a look over here, DaVinci Resolve, we can see that the key mouse movements that I'm showing in this short, the captions are now covering. So what I really recommend doing here, and we're going to just bring it up like so to cover this whole track. And then I'm going to disable these by highlighting these text plus clips and hitting the D key. With that done, we can now take a look at this and I'm just gonna go back to the layout and I'm going to lower them even more and just give it a quick look. Yeah, and I can see that it's not gonna cover here or here, which are the two key areas where we wanna see. So with that done, we can now drag this back in like so. I'm just gonna call this version 03. Now here's the trick. It's just so that we're not populating the entire timeline with that small section, what we're going to do is tell Snap Captions to only generate the captions on this one section where we need the titles a little lower. And so to do this, we simply drag our playhead to the beginning of where we want them to start, it's just here, and hit the I key. And then we wanna take it to the end over here, hit the O key, and you'll see we've created these in and out points. Then we can choose that new version we've just created and just hit create captions. And you'll notice we've now created captions repositioned for that one small section we need. And just to keep things easy, we will give this a quick preview. Finally in DaVinci Resolve, create automatic fancy captions like you see below without any typing, 
And so with this out of the way, the next thing you're going to notice is that the timeline's starting to get a little messy because Snap Captions will keep creating a new video track every time we go to regenerate. So here's a really quick and easy way to clean up once we are happy with the work. All we need to do is delete the clips we're not happy with. And because we've been using the disable, it's very easy to see which ones we aren't. And then we can just right click on the video tracks here and then choose delete empty tracks. And just like that, we've got a nice looking timeline again. So here's a trick that I learned from my Discord group itself, where we can actually rename our clips on the timeline by going down to the clip over here, selecting one of them and going to file and then just naming this whatever we want. I'm going to call this for an easy reference, gold bold pop in. Now, once we've done that, we can literally drag it right back in like so, and you'll see that it already has its name saved straight to the Snap Captions bin. Now, in regards to customizing the animations on these captions, it's definitely possible, and there's multiple ways of doing it. You can, for instance, use Fusion to create some really awesome and customizable captions that no one's ever seen before, but we won't be covering that in this video as it'll probably triple its length. So I'll show you a really quick and easy way you can create animations all while staying within the edit page. So what we're going to do first is grab one of our favorite captions. So we're going to take this one we've recently created and plop it in like so. So what I'm thinking we can do here is we're going to take the tracking tab, which basically creates bigger or smaller gaps with these characters themselves. And I want to basically have this start with all the captions grouped together and then have them pop out and then come back in to give it a nice little bounce feel. And just as a quick note, when we're creating animations like this is that they will anchor themselves to the beginning of the clip. So if we do something like drag this out to the left, you'll notice that the captions don't play immediately. It takes a second for them to kick in. And yeah, it doesn't look good. So a little note, just make sure we don't move the left playhead like this. You can move the clip like that, or you can do this, but yeah, just don't touch the left side. It's the forbidden zone. So what we wanna do is take our playhead to the beginning of the clip, and we're gonna change this to 0.7. Hit a keyframe, and then we're basically just gonna take our keyboard, and with the right arrow key, we're gonna hit that three times. And then we're gonna set another keyframe and we're gonna change this to 1.1, which essentially makes it just go a little bit bigger. And then we're simply just gonna take the arrow key again and hit it twice. And we're gonna set another keyframe here and change this to one, which will normalize the captions. And now we get something that looks like this. And so yeah, just like that, we've created our own custom animations. And I also just wanted to show you really how powerful this is. So just for a little note for the beginners out there, these caption clips are what are called text plus. And you can actually find a base template to start with from scratch by going to the effects page and just searching for text plus. Now a little note, it is not the text. The text will not work with snap captions. It has to be the text plus, but we can drag this in like so. And yeah, you got the whole freedom of these to change it to however you want. So just to give you a quick overview of what you can change and control, we have the layout here, which basically changes your positioning and the sizes you want things to be. And you can even do crazy things like change the rotation. If you go to the transform tab, you can actually take this a step further and just basically change just the characters themselves on an individual basis. So if I use the rotation here, you'll see that it's going to pivoting on their own axis, which does have a pretty fun look. Moving into the shading tab, which we saw before, you can do so much with these shading tabs. We go to the titles effect here. All of these were created with text plus and a really good example is this comic style we've got over here. Like that was all done with separate shading elements. If we go inside here, we can disable them and you can see the individual effects that we have going on like so. And again, once we're happy with this animation itself, we can just simply rename it to whatever we want. So I'm just gonna call this janky expanding text because eh, it's not the greatest looking animation. We're just doing this on a bit of a quick run right now. And then you can drag it back into the snap captions bin and you've got another template to work with. We'll be releasing an advanced tutorial on styling and captions soon. So stick around for that. So now that we've got these new fandangled caption templates, you probably wanna know how to save it as your own caption pack so you can easily install it and use it in every future project you want. So let's go through that right now. To save a new caption pack, all you simply wanna do is right click on your Snap Captions bin, hit Export Bin, 
and you want to keep the name here, Snap Captions, but you can add whatever else you want to the end. So I'm just going to write my first custom caption pack. And then you want to save this wherever you'll be able to easily find it again, like desktop or downloads. Once we've done that, we want to reopen Snap Captions back up. And then in the settings tab over here, we want to go install. You want to select the folder that contains the caption pack you've just created and hit open. And you'll see Snap Captions opens up just like so. All we have to do is check the box here and hit add to your selected pack. And now you'll find it in here. So what's great about this is it actually saves within Snap Captions itself. So it's going to show up on every single project you open. So no more having these complicated bins or using power bins to manage them. The bins are gone. All right, we're done with them. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ash, for making our lives easier. So yeah, that settings tab is super useful for customizing Snap Captions to whatever you want. The next thing I really want to show you is the customization tab in Snap Captions. This is going to take a lot of the tedious, uncreative tasks that come with caption creating and just help automate as much of that as machinely possible. Running through the tools you can use in here, we've got these case conversions. So if you don't want any capital letters, you can use lowercase. If you want to uppercase all the letters like this font here, you can use the uppercase and the capitalize all words will only uppercase the beginning letter in each word. So yeah, depending on your style, you can choose whichever one you prefer. From here, we also have the remove punctuation. So you can just choose to remove all of them or specific ones. If you open up the advanced menu, you'll see you can actually customize this to your exact preferences. So for me, I like removing everything except for the dashes. I find that they are sometimes quite useful to have. And then I can just simply hit the simple button and it'll make snap captions look normal. And you know, we're using the advanced settings options because we have this selected here. Moving on, this is probably by far my favorite tool that really helps save a lot of time and make sure your captions come out really nice. And that's the fill gaps. So the way the fill gaps works is it's going to look for gaps in your subtitle track. And then when it goes to create the captions, it will basically fill them in. So this way you're not gonna have a bunch of captions like popping on and off randomly for like half a second, which can be quite distracting and not look good. Personal preference for me is I like having this at 50 frames. Now, what we've also done to make this even better is you can actually now save your settings. So in here, I'm just going to call this Orson's favorite and hit save. If we have a look at this drop down menu, you'll see we have two options right here. And you can also manage all these saved presets you create by going to your settings tab. And so you can see my saved preference right in here. Now, another really cool thing to just make your lives a lot easier is let's say, hey, I want to save these settings across computers or create backups or even just say share your favorite settings in our Discord community. We can click on the export button here, save it into some folder that's easy to find. And now if we go to hit import, we'll find it right here and we can just open that up like so. And you'll see we've got it right back there. If you've got any suggestions on features you'd love to see, you can simply just click this link here to help inform us what we should do next. And so for you amazing professionals who stay tuned through this entire video, we have a special announcement. We have something big in the works with Snap Captions, something people have been begging for. Just as fair warning, I do have to mention that it's not going to be free, but without further ado, 